Say you wanted to scour the country for a person that has read the most business books of anyone else in existence today. That's a hard search. This search would inevitably lead you to Jack Covert. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, this guy reads a lot of business books. So we decided to tap Jack to do a monthly segment with us on the Penguin Business Beat about one of his favorite business books of all time. And he's going to tell you a little bit about what this book was about and why it was so important and why you should absolutely read it, even if it was published two years ago or five years ago or 15 years ago. So without further ado, here's Jack. My name is Jack Colvert, and I'm the founder of a company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin called 800 CEO Read, and I'm also the co-author along with Todd Satterston of the 100 Best Business Books of All Time, subtitle, what they say, why they matter, and how they can help you. The book I'd like to talk to you today about is The Smartest Guys in the Room, The Amazing Rise and Scandalous Fall of Enron by Bethany McLean and Peter Alkin. And it is a book about probably one of the most famous business collapses of the past 20 years. Now, interestingly, when, the, when this happened, I personally did not read this book. This book was probably the last book published, maybe close to the last books published on the subject. And uh, it was not a book that I grabbed immediately and said I was going to read. I had read, I had followed, personally had followed this story in the Wall Street Journal for many months. And I thought I knew pretty much everything that needed to be known about the subject. When we were picking the books for the 100 best, uh, this book made it to the final cut. And I was looking at it and I was thinking, you know, I'm not sure this book deserves to be on the list. So I took it home on a weekend to read it. And this is ranked as probably one of the best narrative nonfictions about a business that I've ever read. And the part of the reason that that is true is because it is written in such a first-person narrative style. Bethany McLean was a reporter for Fortune, and she was the first person to really call out the fact that the emperor was wearing no clothes. The, during the go-go years, everybody loved what Enron was doing. They were turning over tremendous profits. They were making lots of people lots of money. Um, and Bethany McLean gave the 10 Ks for one quarter to a bunch of people that she knew and said to these guys, how are these guys making money? Where's the money coming from? And that became the, a famous article in Fortune calling, being the first one calling Enron to task. This is a complete overview. The reason why it wasn't the first book is because it is by far the most complete book on the subject of Enron. Interestingly, I have been asked what is the relevance and the merit of putting a book in our book of the 100 best about something that happened so long ago. And I think part of the reason, I think I mentioned it in the review, is that this is repeatable. This is not a one-off. This could very possibly happen if we get into a situation where we as a society will buy pretty much what anybody's selling without challenging, where we as a society are just looking for the short-term quarterly dividends and are not looking at the big picture, the large picture. Enron had a very compelling business um, idea that just didn't work, yet we wanted it. We as a society, we as stockholders wanted it to work and were you, and fell for it. It could very possibly happen if we, again, as, as we have seen with Madoff and the rest of the craziness that's gone on in the past couple of years. So reading about something old, you can learn. You can always learn from history. And history that is so brilliantly written and reads like a thriller. Um, and you get to know the characters. It is just 
it's it's one of the great books on um, the life and death of a business. Part of what makes Smart Skies of the Room so good is because Bethany McLean and Peter Elkin are very good writers, and Bethany McLean comes from a background that would understand and be the person who would say to the emperor, you have no clothes, and have some credibility amongst her peers. This particular case, she was the perfect person to write about this, and I think that all the other Enron books have pretty much fallen by the wayside, and this book continues to sell and be read by at least students and by folks like myself who hadn't read it the first time. Mm-hmm.